internet, I'm finally here to talk about the books I've read. Shocker, I know. So I haven't made a wrap-up since my June wrap-up. So it's been a hot minute since I filmed a wrap-up and I have a lot of books to talk about. Um, between July, August, September, and October, I have read 17 books. So we're going to do 17 little mini reviews today. Some of them are going to be a little more detailed than others since it has been a hot minute since I've read some of these. But some of my probably favorite books of the year are in this list. Some of my least favorite books of the year are in this list. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump into it. Let's talk about July. In the month of July, I read eight books. I participated in both the final biannual Bibliothon and the Reading Rush, which is one of the reasons why I read so many books. And after the month of July, that's kind of when my reading slump started. That's why I haven't really worried about filming a wrap-up too much, because I didn't have a whole lot to talk about. Um, but the first book I read in July was Birthday by Meredith Russo. This is a book that I listened to on audio. I really, really loved the audiobook. It's actually narrated by a trans uh, narrator. This is a story about Eric and Morgan um, and their different birthdays. Both of these main characters have the exact same birthday. They've been best friends pretty much their entire lives. So it takes place on their birthday starting I think at 13 if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, 13 going up through 18. Eric is a kind of more softer character um, and he has some family issues and Morgan is a trans character who's lost her mom and is not only trying to figure out how to keep going without her mom but also dealing with the fact that she's trans in a very conservative town and coming out and all of that. It's a really beautiful story. I really loved how it kind of jumps between points in time instead of it being one consecutive story but Meredith Russo wrote it in a way where it's still like you could connect the dots from birthday to birthday as to what happened in that year prior. Yeah, this was probably one of my favorite books of the year. I wouldn't be surprised if this shows up on my top 10. It's an own voices book since Meredith Russo is also a trans author and it was great. I loved it. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It was really really good. <laughs> The next book I read in July was The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. This is a YA kind of paranormal fantasy book. It's a bit hard to explain, but it basically takes place in this town where there are different founding families, or the founders as they call them, and you read from the perspective of three characters. Um, sorry, my dog is playing in the floor and bumping up against my tripod. Um, you read from the perspective of three characters in this town, um, and it kind of reads like a CW show. I don't really watch a lot of CW shows, but that's what a lot of people have said. I actually read this because I'm in a book club with some other Nashville book people and that's pretty much the consensus we all came to. So if you like CW shows, you would probably like this. But I thought it was really good. Paranormal type books can be kind of a hit or miss for me, but I really liked this one. I thought the writing was really good. I was a bit confused at the beginning because it just kind of jumps into it. Um, without a whole lot of context at the very very beginning but it starts to make more sense fairly quickly I would say um, and especially the last third of the book I was like super hooked I needed to know what would happen next um, and I'm really really excited about the sequel I think it's gonna be very good so I gave this one four stars I really really liked it I'm excited to see what else unfolds with this story so then it was time for the biannual bibliothon and I read three books during the biannual bibliothon this year the first one that I finished was Save the Date by Morgan Matson. This was the last Morgan Matson book that I had to complete, so now I've now read them all, and it was a lot of fun, which I kind of expected it to be. So Save the Date is about this girl named Charlie, who has a fairly big family, and her sister is getting married at her family's house, and so it's basically about the weekend of the wedding and all the events that unfold, but pretty much everything starts to go wrong. It gets very chaotic. It was a lot of fun. I mean, I didn't go into this book expecting to take it super seriously. It was a rom-com, and that's exactly what I wanted from it, so I wouldn't expect it to be anything more serious like some of Morgan Matson's other novels, but it still has that air of, you know, fun, uh, family vibes, a bit of romance. 
it's pretty much everything you would expect from a Morgan Matson novel, to be honest, but it was just a fun time. Obviously, there was a lot of drama involved, which I was super there for. I think this would actually make a really, really fun movie. It read just like a rom-com movie. It would be great. Um, I would love to see that. Like, even though this is a pretty thick book, I read it really fast. I was super absorbed, super into it. I gave it four and a half stars. It's definitely not my favorite Bork and Matson book, but it was so much fun and I highly recommend it. The next book I finished for the Bibliothon was The Steel Prince Volume 1 by Victoria Schwab and the artist is Andrea Olympieri. Um, this basically uh, is a prequel of sorts to the Shades of Magic trilogy by Victoria Schwab, which is one of my all-time favorite series. And this is about King Maxim when he is a prince. I was so excited about this comic series. Um, i had been putting off buying the individual comics because I wanted to wait until the volume came out and I could not wait to get my hands on it. I was a bit disappointed, I will say. Obviously, you know, the story is interesting. I like the new characters a lot. Victoria has always been really good about writing characters and there are a lot of queer characters in this, which is great. But I really don't like the artwork. Um, it's just, it's kind of hard to tell some of the characters apart throughout it. It's just not my favorite and it made the reading experience more difficult and less fun um, to the point where I almost put it down. But I wanted to know what would happen. So I kept going. I made myself read it. I also feel like the story was just a little rushed, and I know that that's because it's comics and whatever, so it's it's not going to be this long, drawn-out thing, and there are going to be more editions, so there's going to be more of a story, but I don't know. I wish there had just been a little bit more, maybe? I'm not really sure how that would be accomplished in a graphic novel, and I know that this is Victoria's first graphic novel, so like it's not going to be perfect. But I think if it had just been a little bit longer, I would have liked it more. But with that being said, I probably will buy the next volume because I'm interested in the characters enough to see what happens next. But overall, I expected more from these and I was a bit disappointed, which kind of sucked. I gave it three and a half stars, which isn't terrible. I did that mostly for the characters and the story. Um, but... I don't know. We'll see. I wasn't super impressed with it. Okay, and the final book I read for the Bibliothon was After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one I listened to on audio, and I really liked the audiobook. First of all, if you didn't know, I really, really love Taylor Jenkins Reid. She's an author I've really gotten into, especially this year, and this book didn't disappoint. Um, this book is about Lauren and Ryan, and their marriage has kind of reached a breaking point where they've decided to take a year apart from each other to see if they can find their way back together. So in this year, Lauren kind of goes on a journey of self-discovery, dealing with family. I think it took a really unique perspective of love in all forms, romance, family, friends, etc. And I really, really appreciated that. And it had an overall theme of there's more than one way to go about life and love and none of those ways are necessarily wrong. You just have to find what works for you. And I really, really appreciated that. So I really loved this. Um, I gave it five stars and it was my favorite book that I read in July. I really, really loved it. Um, cannot recommend it enough if you're getting into more adult fiction romance type stuff. Really, really loved this. <laughs> and then it was time for the reading rush. I only finished two books during the reading rush and I started a third, which I finished up before the month of July was over. The first book I finished for the reading rush was The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one by Amanda Loveless. This is also the Target exclusive edition with the mermaid tail on it. This is the third poetry collection in her, like, uh, I think it's called Women or Some Kind of Magic trilogy, um, which I've enjoyed all of her poetry collections in that series, and this one was no exception. I love this one too. One cool thing about this one is that it also featured a lot of other poets, uh, which I thought was really cool and a really neat addition to kind of sprinkle in some other poets in there, and uh, there were a lot of other poets that I really liked. So I'm glad I finally read it. I gave it four and a half stars, and highly recommend all of these, to be honest. And the other book I finished during the reading rush was Suffer Love by Ashley Herring Blake. This is the only Ashley Herring Blake book that I hadn't read, and it's also the only one of hers that's not queer, because it was her first one. 
Um, but I really, really wanted to read it and give it a shot. I liked it. You could definitely tell it was a debut because it was a bit generic at times, but her writing is just so well crafted that I didn't care how generic it felt. And I really, really liked the story. I thought as far as YA contemporaries go, it was really, really well done. And I gave it four stars. So if you're a fan of Ashley's other books, but you're a bit put off by this one, because it was her first and it's her only straight book, I would say it's still worth reading. It was still really good. Um, and her writing is just as wonderful as always. So still highly recommend this one. And the final book I finished in July was The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. This is the sequel to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which was one of my absolute favorite books in 2017, I think. And this is about uh, Monty's sister, Felicity. This one, as far as like the story goes, I think it was super fun, just like The Gentleman's Guide was. I don't think I enjoyed this one quite as much as A Gentleman's Guide, but I still really, really liked it. I really admired Felicity and her determination, even though she can be a bit unlikable at times, but I also feel like Monty kind of was too, so it makes sense. And she really began to grow on me the more I kept reading. Now, Felicity is asexual. I am not asexual, so I can't give you an own voices review of this, but something about the ace rep just didn't really sit well with me. It's hard for me to remember like specific points or whatever since it has been so long since I read it, but I feel like people challenged Felicity's standpoint on her sexuality more often than she stood up for herself about her sexuality, which I don't know if that makes any sense. If you're ace and you've read this book, I would love to talk about that. Um, and hear your thoughts on that. I don't know if that was just me or if that's like an issue. I don't really know, but it just didn't sit right and it made me kind of uncomfortable. But with that being said, this was still a fun book. I think it was worth reading um, and I gave it four stars. All right, we're finally done with July. So let's hop on over to August. In the month of August, I read four books. Like I said, this is kind of when my reading slump started. The first book I finished was Girls on the Verge by Sharon Biggs Waller. This is a book I actually started during the biannual Bibliothon and then I didn't finish it and I had to put it down because of the reading rush. So I picked it back up and finished it in August. But this is a YA contemporary about a teenage girl who lives in Texas and she finds out she's pregnant and she wants to get an abortion but it's really hard to get an abortion in Texas. So her and her friends go on a road trip um, to a place where she can get an abortion. I thought it was a really, really great story. I feel like abortion isn't a subject that is tackled a lot in literature and I'm glad to see that it's popping up a little more in uh, books, particularly YA. The three main characters, they all had very, very different personalities, and I thought that that added a unique aspect to the story, um, and I liked how that influenced their interactions with each other as well. And I feel like the author actually talked a lot about the abortion process itself, which if you are triggered by that, be aware of that, you may want to stay, stay clear of this, but I actually found it quite educational, um, and I really liked that aspect of it. Not really like the actual abortion itself, I would say, but like the process of getting one is what I mean by that. I'm just really glad that I read it. I'm glad this book exists and I gave it four and a half stars. Highly recommend. The next book I finished in August was Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan. This is the third book in the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy and I listened to this one on audio like I have the other books. I enjoyed this one a lot more than book two because book two really wasn't my favorite. I didn't care for it that much. Um, but the first book is still my favorite of the three. I was really, really into the first two thirds of this, um, but I feel like towards the end it started to drag a bit. But I did really like how the series was wrapped up. I thought it was very well done. Um, and I ended up giving this four stars. I will also say the narrator of that series is very good. So if you're wanting to read those, highly recommend the audiobooks. The next book I finished was another audiobook and that was The Secret Diary of Lizzie Bennet by Bernie Sue and Kate Rorick. This is kind of the book adaptation of the web series, The Lizzie Bennet Diaries, which I absolutely love. It's an adaptation of Pride and Prejudice and it's so well done. I wasn't really sure what all this book would entail if it would be the events during the web series or after or before or what. Um, but this basically is the novelization of the web series with a lot more detail 
and because there's only so much you can put in like three four minute videos so if you're a fan of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries I think that you would really enjoy this I don't think it's necessary but it's definitely a lot of fun um, I would not read this if you haven't watched it though because you would not appreciate it as much this is basically written as the diary that Lizzie kept while that web series was happening so that's why you get a lot more detail as to what's going on which a I mean, as a fan, I really enjoyed. I think I would have enjoyed it more if I had watched the show recently, because it's been a few years, but I still really liked it, um, and it made me want to rewatch it, so I'm probably going to fit that into my schedule soon. Ended up giving this four and a half stars, so it's a lot of fun. And the last book I finished in August was My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. This is my very first Christina Lauren book, and I thought it was a lot of fun. I really get why so many people like their books. Um, Christina Lauren is a pen name for two different authors, um, but this is an adult romance book. One thing I really, really liked about this book is that it was kind of centered around online dating, and I don't actually know if I've ever read a book that's centered around online dating, but that's so relevant to, like, this point in time that it was really refreshing to actually read a book about it. And it was a lot of fun. I really liked Christina Lauren's writing style. It had a friends to lovers trope, which I love. And it was super entertaining, and I liked how the online dating portion of the storyline was handled. I thought it was really well done. One of the main characters I did have some issues with, but I really liked how the storyline was wrapped up. Um, and I definitely want to read more Christina Lauren books. So drop your recommendations down in the comments, because I get the I get the hype now, and I'm on the train. And I ended up giving this four stars. So jumping into September, September was a really, really rough month in terms of reading. I only read two books. One of those books was a reread. So, yay slumps. Um, but that first book that I finished, that reread, was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is the second time I read this book this year, so obviously it's like my favorite book of the year. Um, it's so fun. If you live under a rock, this book is an adult romance book about Alex, who is the son of the President of the United States, and Henry, who is the Prince of Wales, and it's an enemies to lovers story, and it's wonderful and it's beautiful and I love it so much and I'm obsessed with it, if you can't tell. Yeah, I listened to the audiobook of this because I read it physically the first time, and since I was in a slump, I thought it might be fun to read something I've already read, and so I ended up getting the audiobook for this, and it was a lot of fun. So, highly recommend both the print and the audio. And obviously this is a five-star book, so since I've already reviewed this, I'm going to leave it at that, but you should definitely read this book. And the other book that I read in September was Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. This is one of Rainbow's first books, maybe her first book, I don't remember, um, but it takes place during the Y2K phenomenon. So it was kind of fun reading about the Millennium. It's about this IT guy named Lincoln who was hired to basically read employees' emails, the ones that are flagged for misconduct or whatever, um, and so he ends up reading the emails of two of his colleagues, Beth and Jennifer, and starts to kind of fall for one of them. This I liked more than I expected to. I wasn't really sure how I would feel about that breach of privacy, and definitely there were some things Lincoln did that was questionable, but I still, I still think this was a really fun story. It wasn't as weird as I thought it would be. Um, and maybe that's just a testament to Rainbow's writing, or I don't know, but I actually liked it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, it was a lot of fun, and it was cute, and I thought it was wrapped up really well. And ended up giving it four stars. Alright, we're finally in October, where I read three books. First one I finished was Escaping from Houdini by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the third book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. It took me a little while to get through this one, but that was because of the audiobook. I had it for a while. I actually started listening to this in September, I think, um, and then I lost the audiobook, put another hold on it, took me a while to get it back, finished it in October. So, it took me a while to read it, but it wasn't because it was bad or anything. And also, I started reading this in physical format, but my slump was so bad that I just had a hard time getting into it. 
So that's when I started listening to the audiobook and then lost it and then had to put another hold on it. And I liked the audio a lot more. It just worked better for me. I don't think that the story was bad, it just that was what was helping me read at the time. Basically once I got the audiobook I got super into it. This one centers around Houdini obviously and his shows. It takes place on a cruise ship so it was very suspenseful and intense and just a lot of fun. These books are a lot of fun. I ended up giving this one four stars and I'm really excited to read the final one since it just came out a couple months ago. The next book I finished was Queens of Finburn by Kendara Blake. This is a book of two prequel novellas for the Three Dark Crowns series, Queens of Finburn, whatever it's called. One of the stories is about the three queens when they were younger and another one is about the Oracle Queen and I thought both of them were super interesting. I really really love this series so any extra content is worth reading in my opinion and I thought that these were a lot of fun. I don't necessarily know if they are necessary to read. I haven't read the last book yet. Um, so I can't really comment on that, but I think that if you're a fan of these series, you would enjoy reading them. I especially liked reading the one about the young queens because I get a little more context into their younger lives and what it was like when they split up from each other and that kind of thing, and I loved that. And I really, really liked the one about the Oracle Queen as well. We learn a little bit more about her in the third book, um, but this really gave like the story of what happened with her. That was so interesting. Um, so the thing is definitely worth reading. I gave it four stars. Now I am super prepared to read the last book and I'm really excited about it. And the final book I read in October I don't actually have a copy of because I got it from the library. And it is a book that I didn't expect to like. That book is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. This is a horror thriller type book about killer mermaids. Basically I don't want to really say more than that because I feel like you should go into it blind. But yeah, I don't like horror books. I don't really like thrillers that much, it's just not my thing, so I didn't really expect to like this book and I ended up loving it. It was so much fun. I will say the beginning was a little slow. It really takes a lot of time to set the story up, which is a good thing in retrospect, but there were times where it just, it was slow and it made me not want to read it as much, but once the actual like plot took off, Oh my god, I could not put it down. I didn't want to put it down. It was so helpful, especially being in a slump, to read something like that where I was able to just devour it. I really liked the way it was written too. Mira Grant is a pen name for Sean McGuire and I think that she did a really good job balancing out the story but also putting a lot of science behind it to the point where it almost felt like these mermaids could actually be real. It was kind of like incredible how she wrote about them in such a real way. And then, oh my god, this book was so diverse. There were people from different ethnicities, there were queer characters, the main character, one of the main characters is bisexual. There were two twin characters who were both deaf and their sister was their interpreter and it was just, it was so diverse and so well done. So well done. I loved this book way more than I thought I would and I ended up giving it four stars. Really the only reason it was four is because of the slow beginning, but it was great. And that, my friends, is my July through October wrap up. Sorry this video is so long, um, but I wanted to make sure that I got this up so that way I could kind of get back on track with wrap ups a little bit. And uh, hopefully I will start getting out of this reading slump soon. I'm still in a bit of a slump, but I'm wanting to read a little bit more. Um, so hopefully I'm kind of crawling my way out of it and I'll actually have more books to wrap up for November and December. If you've read any of the books that I reviewed, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you guys next time with another video. Bye!